quake swarms magnitude 3.5 and 3.3 today strike New Madrid seismic zone. And we also had a very strange Adirondack Montreal earthquake. Small, but still, there shouldn't be quakes there, and there are. This is the New Madrid seismic zone. As you can see, it spans various states. On December 16, 1811, they had a magnitude 8.6 there. Now, this is an area that is basically the real uh, foot rift zone. It's a rift valley. It's a failed rift valley. It was supposed to separate from the continental United States, allowing instead of the Mississippi River, there would have been ocean going through there. This is the actual location of the New Madrid seismic zone. It should be called New Madrid Rift Valley. This is where we're getting all these quakes. Let's take a look at them together. Alright, this is the past week. The blue is today. And if it's red, it's, it's the last hour. Many times when I do talk, we turn uh, some earthquakes become red. Now, this is the one that we're talking about in Montreal. Actually, it's on the border of uh, US Canada. It's inside the New York border. 1.4 magnitude, 6.5 kilometers depth. It's about three, four miles down. And if we look into the details of it, this is it right here. I don't think anybody felt it because it was just, uh, it's just too low, too small. Uh, they don't have any, even though we asked for tectonic faults, uh, sorry, U.S. faults to be put up there, they don't. Now we see that, let's go into the uh, aerial. Okay, this is basically a river here. This is, this is all, as you can see, it's a fault line. Okay, we said all rivers are fault lines. And uh, this is it right here, one of them here. Let's look at it, uh, grayscale, topographic, that's it right here, you can see it a little bit better. All right, um, this is the Adirondack area, beautiful area. Okay, um, going back, okay. All right, I did ask for the faults, but it only gave us the faults basically on the west coast. Uh, and nothing here. I don't know why they don't do that, because this is full of faults here. Full of faults. Uh, this is the New Madrid seismic zone area. And uh, it's the real foot rift zone going from the Mississippi River. This line here along Lake Erie. And... Uh, out to uh, the Great Lakes, Ottawa, Montreal, and out to the St. Lawrence River. Let's take away the population. Maybe you can see better that way. All right. Okay, you can see better. The folding is here is very evident. Let me go up this way. We go to Google Earth. This is it. Along Lake Erie. Lake Ontario, Ottawa, Montreal, and out. And this is the area where we had the uh, quake swarm. The, sorry, the uh, Montreal quake. Going back now. Okay. Let's go back to the other ones. That's a small one. Uh, perhaps we should read a little bit about what it involves. Adirondack region, northern New York State, one of the most seismically active parts of northeastern United States. The three largest known earthquakes in the region caused about $20 million of damage in 2002 dollars in Cornwall, Ontario and Massena, New York, Messina, New York in 1944, caused slight damage in a partly settled area, part of the Southern Adirondack Mountains, in 1983, magnitude 4.9, damaging the vicinity of Plattsburgh, New York, 2002, magnitude 5 earthquake. That's pretty big for that area. Moderately damaged earthquakes strike somewhere in the region every few decades, and smaller earthquakes are felt about once every three or four years. 
the faults everywhere occur on faults within bedrock, usually miles deep. Most of the Adirondacks region bedrock was formed as several generations of mountains rose and were eroded down again over the last billion years or so. Well studied plate boundaries like the San Andreas Fault in California, often scientists can determine the names of specific fault that's responsible for an earthquake. In contrast, east of the Rocky Mountains, this is rarely the case. The Adirondack region is far from the nearest plate boundaries, which are in the center of the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. The region is laced with known faults, but numerous smaller or deeply buried faults remain undetected. Even the known faults are poorly located at earthquake depths. Accordingly, few Adirondack earthquakes can be linked to named faults. It's difficult to determine if a known fault is still active and could slip and cause an earthquake. As in most other areas east of the Rockies, the best guide to earthquake hazard is the in the Adirondack range is the earthquakes themselves. Now going to the, that's why we don't have the fault lines here. Now we go into this area. Look at this. This is amazing. Okay, this is it. Oh, we had a couple of more. Okay. This is, this is amazing. This is, uh, that this can't all be because of fracking. We do have tremendous fracking there. This is 5.3, Fairview, Oklahoma. Of course it was felt. It should have been felt. Nobody reported it. Okay. Nobody reported it. That's up to them if they didn't report it. The uh, depth, 50, uh, 32, uh, depth is, sorry, uh, 8.2 kilometers depth. That's about four, four miles, five miles depth. is pretty shallow. And most of North America, east of the Rocky Mountain, infrequent earthquakes. Here and there earthquakes are more common for example New Madrid seismic zone centered in southeastern Missouri. The actual location of this this here is this here is in Missouri, but then we're talking now about the uh, Oklahoma Missouri area. That's New Madrid seismic zone, and that's what that's why they're talking about it. And let's go. Okay. So New Madrid seismic zone centered on southeastern Missouri, uh, east of Quebec, New England, New York, Philadelphia, Wilmington, urban corridor, and elsewhere. Most of the enormous region of the Rockies to the Atlantic can go years without an earthquake large enough to be felt, and several U.S. states have never reported a damaging earthquake. Earthquakes east of the Rockies, although less frequent than the west, are typically felt over a much broader region because of the sediment. Okay, it would be not be unusual for a magnitude 4 earthquake in eastern or central North America to be felt by a significant percentage of the population in many communities more than 160 kilometers of source, a magnitude 5.5 earthquake in east or central North America might be felt by much of the population out to more than 300 miles from its source. Earthquakes east of the Rockies are centered in population areas and large enough to cause damage area, uh, similarly likely to cause damage out to greater distances than earthquakes of the same magnitude in the west. In due seismicity, they're talking about, of course, fracking. In the case elsewhere in the world, there's evidence that some central and eastern North American earthquakes have been triggered, caused by human activities. They're called, this is about uh, hydraulic fracturing having to do with the shale oil, right? And they have altered the stress conditions in Earth's crust sufficiently to induce faulting. Activities that have induced felt earthquakes in some geologic environments including impoundment of water behind dams, injection of fluid into the earth's crust, extraction fluid of gas, removing of rock in mining and quarrying operations. Much of the eastern and central North America, a number of these earthquakes suspected of having been induced is much smaller than the number of natural earthquakes, but in some regions such as south central states, a significant majority of recent earthquakes are thought by many seismologists to have been human induced. Now, uh, let's go to the Missouri. Missouri, we had 3.0 and 3.3. 3.3 at 8.2 depth, kilometers depth. 
at 8.47 UTC time in the morning. And uh, that was this one was about four hours earlier. So the bigger one, 3.3, .3, was four hours later. Okay, let's go to this one. Did they feel this one? Yes, 59 people reported feeling it. Okay, that's it right there. Aerial, and let's go to did you feel it? Response. Okay, they don't map it for some reason. That's it right there. And uh, it's pretty populated as we can see. Topographic. What did we have before? Okay, that's the epicenter. Historic seismicity is right there. The little dots. Let's pull out a little bit. Okay. There you go. Tectonic plates, we won't have them. And we won't have your thoughts either. Because they're so deep and old that they really don't know where they are. But we know that this is the uh, New Madrid seismic zone. Okay. This is a New Madrid seismic zone. Let's pull out a little bit. There we go. Okay. It's in this, this area. So all of this area, as you can see, is New Madrid Seismic Zone. And it's the crack going all the way this way, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, all the way to Montreal. So this quake that we had here, obviously, was a part of this pressure. With Oklahoma and uh, Missouri and the uh, Adirondacks, New York, Montreal, New York, Canada, uh, New York, Quebec quake. And going back, of course, it's a New Madrid seismic zone. Southeast Missouri and adjacent states, and adjacent states, not just Missouri, of course. This is the real foot zone, the real foot uh, rift valley. It's the most seismic active in North America, east of the Rockies. During the winter of 1811-1812, Three very large earthquakes devastated the area and were felt throughout most of the nation. Most of the nation. They occurred a few weeks apart. December 16th, January 23rd, and February 7th. Hundreds of aftershocks, some severely damaged, damaging by themselves, continued for years. Prehistoric earthquakes similar in size to those occurred in the middle of the 1400s and around 900 AD. Strong, damaging earthquakes struck the southwestern end of the seismic zone near Marked Tree, Arkansas in 1843, magnitude 6.3, and the northeast end near Charleston, Missouri in 1895, magnitude 6.6. Since 1900, moderately damaging earthquakes have struck the seismic zone every few decades. About twice a year, people feel still smaller quakes that do not cause damage. Earthquakes in the central and eastern U.S. typically felt over a much broader region than in the western U.S., east of the Rockies. An earthquake can be felt over an area as much as 10 times larger than a similar magnitude earthquake on the, north, on the west coast. A magnitude 4 eastern U.S. quake typically can be felt at many places as far as 60 miles from where it occurred, and it infrequently causes damage near its source. A magnitude 5.5 eastern U.S. quake usually can be felt 300 miles from where it occurred, and sometimes causes damage as far as away as 25 miles. And the faults we know, you can't really tell where they are. They're so old that you can usually find out where the faults are because of the earthquakes. And also, of course, usually where you have the rivers, as we know. Rivers are fault lines. All right? So that is our today's activity having to do with New Madrid Seismic Zone. We're going to go into Yellowstone and what's happening here as well. Ridgecrest and the West Coast. And we see there's a lot of activity picked up around Portland and Seattle as well.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.